Okay, guys, you've got to watch Rumble Live on the KO Cup coming up on the 31st of October. It's going to be magnificent. Not only is it the best white collar boxing show you're ever going to see, you're going to get the chance to be interactive on this show, to vote for the people's champion, to vote for the best boxer, to vote for the fight of the night. It's going to be an amazing interactive experience with live scoring as we go along so that you can follow it in depth. It's going to be brilliant. It's going to be fantastic. We want to see you there. We look forward to it. Okay, Peter, so what I wanted to talk about today, really, it was in the aftermath of the Lomachenko-Lopez fight. Fantastic fight, great performance from both boxers. And as we know, Lopez came away victorious. And, you know, it was, I think, you know, going back, I said that I thought Loma might have a little bit too much, and I tipped him for a points victory. But, you know, as people said, he left it too late, or Lopez wouldn't let him get into gear too early. And interestingly enough, a lot of trade people were tipping Lopez. And we had, because um, of course, we had William Monroe Jr. Um, talking to us a few months ago on this show, saying that he thought Lopez was going to win that fight. Fight. And um, yeah, so fascinating fight, great fight, you know, great, great for boxing that it happened and, uh, you know, a, a great display as well. But what I wanted to talk about was the aftermath of that, because there was a lot of um, negative stuff about Lomachenko that I feel came out about that on the forums and everything else, which I thought was very unfair. And I wanted to drill down into why that happens and why people say these things um, about what is obviously a great boxer. And, and, and I think it's a little bit of a problem that boxing's got. It's a bit of a dichotomy. You know, we're, we're kind of always saying to people, what we want is 50-50 fights. And that's what the people want to see. Well, you know, underlying that is, is, is a home truth that, that all boxers know and all trainers know. If you only take 50-50 fights, you will end up with a 50-50 record. And if you end up with that 50-50 record, in other words, do what everybody wants you to do, nobody will want to watch you because your record is 50-50. And this is where it comes into the, the Lomachenko thing. I mean, you know, obviously consummate boxer, amazing skill. Uh, you know, we saw that amateur career, you know, culminating in those two goals. I mean, his amateur record was 396 wins and one loss. And that one loss was avenged twice. And then he comes into the pro ranks, um, you know, he does a 10 rounder in his first fight. And then he goes to set a record and win a world title in his second fight. And he boxed Orlando Salido for the WBO featherweight title. And he lost that fight, you know, close decision on points. But, you know, it was just, he just couldn't really, it was too much of a jump from the amateurs to the pros in the second fight. But in his third fight, he won a world title boxing Gary Russell Jr. for the same title. Um, interestingly enough, in that first fight, Salido came in overweight, so couldn't retain the title, couldn't win the title. So um, not only was Lomachenko boxing someone who was an experienced, established pro in his second pro fight, he was boxing someone who was over the weight limit that he was supposed to be boxing in. But anyway, so he, he, he narrowly lost that and then won it in his third fight, equaling the record for winning a world title in the quickest possible time. So from then on, He's only boxed in world title fights. And um, so now his record after the Lopez right fight reads 14 wins, two losses. So 14 wins, two losses. If you put that in front of the average boxing fan, it doesn't look any deeper into records. It's not that impressive. You know, they're going to think this guy, you know, is maybe not going to go anywhere, has found his level. But without going into the details of, of, of Lopez Lomachenko and, and, and how he won and what his future options are, I'm just saying, you know, I think he has to be given a lot of kudos for taking that fight. We know that Lomachenko demanded, in a way, that fight um, and even made some, you know, some, some, purse deck, uh, some, some purse movements, as he's done before, you know, to make the opponents uh, box him. Uh, you know, uh, so he's, he's often chased the hardest fights that he can possibly get, always engaged in the hardest fights he can possibly get, even taking pay cuts to get the harder fight. And he's ended up with his 14 and two record so far. I mean, obviously we haven't seen the last of Lomachenko. There's much more to come. But, you know, on the forums, people are saying, well, he's not that great. We never thought he was that good. And we've got to contrast that, I suppose, with the person we often come back to, who we know has got the ultimate record, that 50 and 0 record across those five weight divisions. And an, an amazing boxer, a consummate, you know, consummate skills. And please don't get me wrong. I'm not going to slag off Floyd Mayweather here at all. But I'm saying that he played the game his way. And that could be taken as a compliment or it could be taken as, uh, you know, as detrimental. He played, the, Floyd played the game his way. Floyd recognised that boxing was a business and maybe he put the business quite high up there. You know, he sometimes um, had the fight played to his advantage. He was effectively the promoter for a lot of his fights. So, you know, I mean, he could, for example, he wanted to box Ricky Hatton in a 24-foot ring. Hatton would have preferred a 16-foot ring, obviously because of the contrast in style. So in little ways, 
Floyd could wait things. And why wouldn't he? And why shouldn't he? You know, and sometimes he would, you know, he didn't fight Pacquiao really at a peak Pacquiao. He, you know, you say you let that fight build, but, you know, he passed over that when that was, you know, there was all the clamour for that. Um, you know, and there's other people, you know, that, that, that he boxed when maybe they were a little bit past their best. Or obviously Canelo a little bit before, you know, coming into maturity. But he ended up with that perfect record, that 50-0 record, obviously capped by the McGregor fight, you know, fighting a novice in his first fight. But he's got that record. So whenever you talk to someone about Floyd Mayweather, they say 50 and 0, 50 and 0, no defeats, you know. But and Floyd took that route. And, I, and again, I don't want to say this is detrimental to Floyd because it's a route that a lot of boxers would love to take. You know, he capitalized on the business. And let's not all forget, also forget, Floyd comes from a, you know, a deep boxing family and he saw his uncle Roger, you know, sort of fall apart with pugilistic dementia, undoubtedly from the beatings he had taken in the ring. And, the, you know, Roger was a world champion as well. Roger was an amazing boxer. But, you know, he didn't come out of it with loads of money. And obviously he didn't come out of it intact. And eventually Roger, God rest his soul, died from the effects of this. So can Floyd be blamed for playing the game, using it the best of his talent to milk the most money out of the system that he could possibly get? And I would say obviously he can't. But it's, it's an approach that he took. It's not the approach that Lomachenko has taken. And so Lomachenko has ended up, you know, just wants to fight the best all the time. And so he's ended up with this record. So that's what I'm saying is that people have got to look beneath records. They've got to look, look, look a little bit harder, maybe give people like Lomachenko the credit for doing what the fans demand and doing what the fans ask, you know, but then they don't end up with the perfect record and then they maybe don't, don't end up with, you know, the, maybe it's not the smartest way to go in the boxing business, but in the boxing sport, you know, it is the best way to go to find out actually where you sit, to find out how your talent measures up against the best of your era. So I just think, you know, Lomachenko deserves all the, all the credits and plaudits in the world uh, for going down that route of, you know, the extreme sportsmanship, we might call it. Um, so, you know, I think pat on the back and where does he go from here? I mean, I think there's great fights. You know, he's obviously going to want that rematch. He's pushing for that rematch. There's other great fights here, but light for a lightweight, he could easily drop to super feather feather and have great fights there. For Lopez, I think Lopez, mate, is, you know, is probably going up. I don't know if he will take the, the rematch, he'll say, well, I've been there, I've done that, you know, I've, I've, I've done lightweight, I've got the four belts, and I think maybe the future is incredibly bright for that kid, but it's probably north of the lightweight division. But, you know, let's give them all plaudits and, and, and all applause. And like I say, just look a bit deeper into the records and what they really mean. That's that's all I was going to say about that. And I think Lomachenko highlighted that, um, you know, coming out of that amazing fight with that 14-2 and record. And I think the... Uh, the detrimental comments were undeserved. He should be patted on the back for taking the risks.